this is not an effective way of figuring out how far away the stars are. It, confusingly, you'd probably get better results if you did something like this instead. Well, not exactly that, but um, I'll, I'll explain. But first, if you're a returning viewer, you know the drill. If you're new here, check the description to see what to do with this goat picture. Let's get talking about parallax and the distance to the stars, and we'll start with a story of a guy named Gal. Galileo Galilei did not invent the telescope, but he may have been considered a world champ at using one, making some incredibly precise measurements of things in the sky, but that wasn't enough to keep the guy out of trouble. And in the year 1633, Galileo was arrested for saying that he thought that the Earth orbited the Sun instead of the other way around, which today, that kind of thing is just common knowledge to everyone but the flat earthers. But back in Galileo's time, you could get in a lot of trouble for saying that kind of thing. One major point against Galileo was that people were like, Gal, my pal. <laughs> if I knew I wasn't going to be able to say that with a straight face. If the Earth truly did orbit the Sun as you say it does, then we should notice a parallax effect with the stars, and we don't. And unfortunately for Galileo, in his lifetime that was true. The parallax effect was not measured before he died. His measurements were good, but not quite good enough. Old Galileo ended up dying under house arrest in the year 1642, and the parallax effect would not be noticed or observed or measured for almost 200 more years. It took the Catholic Church even longer than that to forgive Galileo, and in the year 1992, they officially recognized that Galileo was right all along, and they were wrong. 350 years after he died. Better late than never, I suppose. But would things have been different for Galileo if he was able to prove the parallax effect? I kind of think no. I think that the Catholic Church was pretty set on arresting him at the time anyway, but it's an interesting thought. Now, what is the parallax effect? See, if you've got a body that can move and eyes that can see, you use the parallax effect all the time, whether you know it or not. And I'm using it right now while I'm starting to drive this car. Now I'll give you a simple example of it right now. Let's say that I'm driving down the road and I look out the window of my car. The stuff that is closest to me seems to be whizzing past, whereas the stuff that's a bit farther away seems to move a bit more slowly. And the stuff that's really, really far away doesn't seem to move at all. And there, that's the parallax effect. Your brain makes use of this effect all the time as you move through the world to build this mental map of how far away things are from you, and we'd be kind of lost without it. But now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Earth's orbit around the sun and finding the distance to the stars? Welcome to the Milky Way galaxy. We live about, say, here, orbiting this complete basic bitch of a star that we've named the Sun, and we're completely surrounded in all directions by randomly distributed other stars. And as we complete our little laps in this nearly circular orbit, it's about 300 million kilometers in diameter, we're kind of getting a different perspective on the stars and having this parallax effect that can happen with them. So if you were to take a picture of a given constellation in say January and then six months later take a picture of that same constellation in July you may notice that some of the stars have shifted compared to where they were initially with the ones closest to you moving the most and the ones farthest away moving the least and the really far away ones uh, don't seem to move at all but the amount that it shifts is incredibly tiny because even though we're orbiting and it's this 300 million kilometer thing the closest star to us is still, and I just keep bumping into them. This one's blue, so it's really hot. The closest star to us is still almost 40 trillion kilometers away. And so when you look at the sky, you're never going to notice this with just your eyes because our eyes are too stupid to see that kind of thing. To get an idea of just how small that shift is in the sky, like how little a star actually moves and why it would have been so hard for someone like Galileo to measure it using like the first generation telescope, um, you need to think about something called an arc second. And you don't really necessarily need to know entirely what an arc second is, but I'm going to give you an easy way to understand it. An arc second, when looking at the sky, is roughly the width of a human hair held out at arm's length. And so that is a very tiny amount. And 
all of these parallax shifts are less than that amount, and most of them are quite a bit less than that amount, like as little as 1% of that amount. It's really, really tiny. But whenever you can measure it, how do you use that information to figure out how far away that star actually is? If you're looking for the really long, detailed answer about how to calculate distances to the stars using the parallax effect or any other methods, then this video and this channel may not really be for you because I don't really want my channel to be laced with methamphetamine, so to speak. But there is a simplified equation that can be used and I think it'll fit fairly well in here. The very simplified version of the equation is D equals one over P, where P is just that parallax shift measured in arc seconds and D is the actual distance to the star measured in parsecs. Maybe you've heard of parsecs before in like a sci-fi context, but they're an actual real unit of measurement. Now, if you were to take a star like Proxima Centauri, it's the closest star to our solar system, of course, other than the sun, the parallax shift for Proxima Centauri is about 0.77 arc seconds, which would mean plugging it into this equation that the distance is 1.3 parsecs away, and that's about 4.24 light years or close to 40 trillion kilometers away. And that's a simplified view of just how that parallax shift in the sky can translate into how far away the actual star is. I am very interested in this idea of the Earth moving around the sun and changing what we see as the year goes on. New things come into view in the nighttime that used to be obscured by the daytime. That's how people have been able to track the passing of time using the stars to gauge when the seasons are happening. And they've been doing this for thousands of years. But what are the seasons? Well, that's going to have to wait until next time. It's the subject of my next video. This is all that I had for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.